Good everyone, welcome back to another episode of Spark Your Fire. Um, I'm your host, David Shi, and uh, today we are bringing on Andrew from uh, Aurora Estate Agents back on our show. Andrew, how are you, mate? Pleasure, mate. Good to see you again. Likewise, um, likewise, mate. It's been a while, and uh, I can see you just finished uh, open inspections from 1.30 to 2, so thanks <laughs> for jumping on straight away. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> like. Being a busy guy, mate, being a busy guy, we can understand. But uh, look, I think it's it's been a while since we brought you back on. Um, you obviously, uh, you guys operate around the southeast uh, Victoria, or well, I should say southeast Melbourne market, around Berwick and all that kind of stuff. So those are the the the, the nice owner-occupied areas as far as my understanding goes. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in terms of getting a bit of a Victorian market update in general like you know because you guys do sales you guys do property management which is fantastic right like you do both so there's a lot of coverage that we can get in terms of what you're seeing what are the market sentiments like um so i guess let's just go from top level um what are you seeing on the ground at the moment from a sales activity perspective are people rushing in at the moment for open inspections and go i've got money andrew this is my offer <laughs> <I wish>. or, <laughs> or i don't kind of go yeah, Andrew, I'm not too sure about this property, mate, to be honest. You know, how about this price? You know, try to lowball a few. What, what are you seeing now? Um, see, so if we go sort of back 12 months, David, um, yep. there probably wasn't that much enthusiasm in the market, um, not many buyers. And then if we if we met buyers, they're enthousi- they, they weren't particularly enthusiastic about any particular property. And then we got to about September to December okay. when the stock levels in the market just plummeted, absolutely oh. dropped. Yep. And um, that's when we saw a lot more enthusiasm because there was more, well, there was a lack of competition between properties. So mm. buyers were fighting over um, certain properties. And as an example, we auctioned a property off in a suburb called Narrow Warren, no, right. uh, which is about 45 kilometres southeast of the CBD. And um, we listed that property for uh, 690 to 750. Um, the owners, the owners, and I thought if we can get seven, run that mid sevens, it'd be a pretty solid price. Mm-hmm. Um, the property ended up selling for eight hundred eighty-three thousand. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was due to the fact that at that time there was almost nothing on the market that was comparable to that property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And now things basically. Yeah. Absolutely. And now what we're experiencing is probably what's. A bit of anticipation so we know that rates haven't haven't increased for quite a while there's a bit more confidence back in the market yep. um, and owners are now getting ready to sell and ready to move so um looking at our sort of listings volume at the moment it's a lot higher than it has been probably for the past 18 months so i suspect um there will be more stock entering the market within the next six months mm-hmm. and then once those interest rates drop i think we're going to see maybe levels to what we saw in 2020 and 2021 when the market just went absolutely gangbusters. So uh, I think Melbourne is due anyway um, for, for a boom. It, the last time was, you know, three and a half years ago now. So usually the cycle is around 18 to 24 months. So we're, we're well overdue for a boom. Well um, so I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating 2025, hoping spring 2024, but I think 2025 is going to be a really good year for real estate. So to summarize, I guess the number of listings have started to increase uh, again yeah. from start of the year. How about yeah. buyer inquiries at this stage? Have they also increased in terms of anticipation? A lot of people trying mm-hmm. to get in before the rate do start to move. Yeah, uh, it would depend on the property at this stage. I'm, I'm generally find, finding that demographic that between the 600,000 to 800,000 is going very, very quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first, the first home buyer market. Um, properties that are sort of priced a bit higher, that, that plus one million, mm-hmm. um, there's less there's less buy inquiry, but I'm finding the confidence is back. So mm-hmm. buyers are willing to put in offers that are better than what it would have been 12 months ago right. uh, because they know that their, their interest rates probably won't go. If they're on a variable sort of um, loan, it's probably not going to go up much higher. So there's, there's a lot more confidence in a buyer to make an offer. Yeah. That's not going to be a low ball. It's going to be quite a reasonable offer compared to what the market's going for. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Well, it's an interesting market, I've got to say. So so affordability corridors around the 600, 800 are flying out fairly oh, quickly. Bang. Yeah. First week open, 10 offers on the table. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I listed, um, again, one in Narrow Warren on Monday. Yeah. And I've been inundated with inquiries. Uh, and then we'll list something, you know, that was a plus one million last week and we might get three or four inquiries. But it will still sell. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that first home buyer market is... is the confidence levels are very high at the moment. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
And are you finding any um, any investors that's kind of active at the moment, or are they buying mainly for first home owners and that kind of stuff? What sort of people are buying? Yeah, investor market's been quite funny. I'm not sure if your listeners are aware, uh, but in 2021, the Victorian government passed a whole heap of legislation uh, making changes to the Residential Tenancies Act, mm -hmm. which required owners to make their properties uh, more compliant than they used than, than they used to have to be in the past. Yep. Um, changes to the notice to vacate, a whole bunch of changes, about 121 changes to the Residential Tenancies Act. Right. Um, and obviously, coupled with the rising interest rates, um, a lot of investor owners actually withdrew from the market. So I would say about 75% of my sales in the last 18 months have been investor owners. Wow. Okay. Just yeah. all, basically. and Just getting out of it because they just can't afford to hold on to them anymore. Mm. And just the compliance costs have been too high. Mm. So most of the buyers that we're meeting now, like I said to you, will be your first home buyers or people in that sort of upper range who have the confidence now to know that, you know, their, their loans won't move by all that much. So a lot more owner occupiers now than there are investor owners because um, a lot of investor owners are looking to get out. But I, I feel like that confidence will gradually get back in once people, you know, are used to the compliance regulations that are in place and the fact that, you know, their, 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 their loans won't move that much. So, um, yeah, that, that confidence will come back. Investors will always be there. They'll come and go. Uh, but just the last 18 months has been a bit weird for them. So um, hopefully we'll come back come back soon. Yeah. I think the main thing will be the cash flow squeeze, isn't it? Especially with uh, rents hasn't been going up as much as well. That's the issue. Um, rents? Yeah. Rents, rents have gone up heaps, mate. Have they? <laughs> not as much but, um, as the other. In Melbourne, it's been ridiculous. Like okay, really? we, 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 um, we, we had a property in Berwick on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Um, Three-bedroom home, nothing special, uh, 545 a week. Um, last year probably would have got about four seventy a week. Okay. Uh, we had thirty two groups and thirty two uh, applications. So mm -hmm. the market in Mel rental market in Melbourne is absolutely gangbusters. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you know an owner's compliance cost hasn't increased. It doesn't mean that the interest rate costs have increased. So, so I don't think the the the, the rental amount is covering adequately enough what the cost for the owner is, right. which, which is why they're getting out of the market. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. So when I, when I say it in terms of the increase, it's probably still relatively low from a rental gross yield perspective in comparison yeah. to other states. That's available at the moment, um, but yeah. it's catching up, is what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Because I think I remember when we spoke maybe a couple of years ago, or even twelve months ago. Yeah, yields in southeast Melbourne were about between four, three, and four percent, which isn't that high. No. So when when you when you start increasing interest rates, when you increase compliance costs, that yield's going to go down to. One and a half, two, two and a half percent. So that's nothing. So unless you can afford to hold it long term to get the capital gain, um, yeah, it's just not worth it. Yeah, and that's and that's the issue at the moment. I mean, I've got a lot of clients who wanted to buy into Melbourne right now, but it just the cash flow just doesn't stack up. You know, when they when they look at getting the mortgage and the interest rate at today's interest rate as well, they they're, they're mm. just basically in the red from day one. Um, so you know, when when cash flow is the king in in the current mm. environment. Um, you know, unfortunately, they have to kind of forego uh, the Melbourne market, even though there is a lot of opportunities around there, um, yeah. like I say, in the long term. Certainly from a capital growth perspective, I think for the first time, Brisbane's at medium price actually now surplus Melbourne, um, mm. is my understanding. Not by much, but look, I'm sure you guys will catch up um, soon. There's a lot of value yeah. that's available in the market. But um, uh, I think, yeah, uh, from a regional market perspective, though, which I don't think you'll you'll know too much, but you know mm. the likes of Ballarat, Bendigo, um, lots of value available there, and and rental yield is probably looking more like four to five percent as well because yeah. purchase price is lower. But you know, yeah, different different type. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and yeah, I, again, recalling our discussions, you know, two, three, four years ago yeah. when you asked me, you know, where where should owners invest, and I said right. the west of Melbourne, so now you you Ballarat to Geelong, your Werribee's. Yeah, Melton's right. they're all they're all starting to pick up. And it's still the case. So um, you know, if 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 you do have investors that are looking to invest in Victoria, I'd still recommend to go out that way. Um yes, they the prices are catching up to to what they are here, but it's still great value. In terms of a standard house that you can buy in Aurora and today, let's say a free one one, um, and that's say eight hundred pay, let's just say stock standard, how much can you rent for that today in today's market? Uh, like, Ish. Yeah, three one one. You're probably looking somewhere around the five hundred mark. Five hundred. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I think the around the Berwick now Warren area is predominantly on owner occupiers, uh, as far as my understanding goes. Right. So. Yeah. 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 You're looking at about 
Yeah, sixty-five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Well, that's good to that's good to know. Thanks for sharing that knowledge. Now, in terms of the property management aspects of things as well, um, I think you already mentioned there's a drop in terms of the uh, investors that you can notice. Um, uh, is that across the the whole Melbourne that you're that you're seeing at the moment? Yeah. So yeah, investors yeah. floating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in in terms of our our, our rent roll, like we we've, we've signed new owners on. But yes. then the number that we've signed on is equally matched by the, the number of owners that are exiting because they're selling or they're moving into the, those properties. Yeah, right. So, so our, our 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 net net result of rent roll has been pretty st pretty 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 stable over the last pretty twelve stable. months. Yeah. Um, and like I said, that's due to you know the changes of the Residential Tenancies Act. And I know in New South Wales, um, the, the Labor government there prior to the election promised things such as removing the no grounds evictions. Yeah, and and that that that's basically you know, carbon copy of what Victoria is doing done down here. Mm. So I know I know Queensland is going through the consultation stage, or if not, they've yeah. already implemented those laws, and New South Wales will, will follow suit. Yeah. So you know, those laws which were meant to, I guess, enable renters to have more rights, um, it had a counter effect of having owners withdrawing from the market because it's increased their compliance costs, and as a result, that's contributed to the reason why rents have gone up because the number of rental properties available in the market has decreased. Mm. So it's had a it's had a, a good and bad effect um but for for owners it's it's probably more negative than it has been positive yeah no unfortunately that's the case and did i remember correctly that uh i think the dan andrews also introduced a temporary land tax uh increase as well at the at the moment for investors is that right yeah 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 some of my owners who own you know two, two three four properties are really feeling the pinch because their land taxes has doubled, some some have tripled, wow. uh, and I've seen they bring the bills in to me, and I've seen it. Um, so it's it's not it's not a great time to be a property investor, particularly like you said, if cash flow is king. If you've got the cash flow and you can hold that for the next five, 10, 15 years, you're going to get the capital gain out of it, Absolutely. which is why you invest in property, right? But if you're investing for cash flow, um, it's it's not great. Victoria is not not the market there, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair. Do you know when that, because uh, I think that was only a temporary measure in terms of that that extra bit of land tax. Do you know whether there was end date to it or at the moment just? No, I don't. I don't actually. I don't actually. And, and look, I mean, it's, it's great revenue for the government. So dare I say that temporary <laughs> might turn into permanent pretty pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that it's filling up the COVID uh, budget shortfall as far yeah. as yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, Unfortunately, the Victorian landlords are suffering from that. Mm, okay. All right, so I think that's a pretty good summary in terms of the areas. But uh, yeah, I, I do feel like there is a lot of room uh, for growth, especially around you know Melbourne from a capital growth perspective. Just like yeah. what you've been saying in the last, um, you know, it hasn't had a growth for hasn't boomed for about two and a half years. And um, you know, I think as a matter of fact, you know, Sydney's continued to race ahead. Uh, but the auction actually, you just we just had one of the bigger auction markets last weekend. Is this is this upcoming one? We're recording kind of around the mid March at the moment. Is the one upcoming, the just before the Easter holidays? Is the upcoming one the biggest uh, auction market that you're aware of? Before you um, this, this up, it sort of, it sort of fluctuates. It sort of fluctuates. Um, okay. But in, 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 the number that I, I generally look at is the clearance rate. Okay, that, yep. that shows how the market's going. And in so in the past four or five weeks, it's been hovering around that high sixties to to low seventies. Which indicates it's an okay market. But like usually, I, I say you know if it's above eighty, it's awesome. Yes. If it's sort of seventy it to eighty, it's market. okay. And then if it's below sixty, it's it's pretty bad. Hmm. So it's it's sort of hovering in the middle somewhere. Um, obviously, we just had the Labor Day um, weekend here in Victoria, oh, and it was low, and that right. that's expected. But yeah. other than that, the weeks, the three four weeks around it, um, have been around the high sixties to low seventy. So it's 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 moving along okay. Hmm. Mm. Okay. What would be your advice in terms of anyone who holds property in Victoria market at the moment? Would you recommend them to look at holding up because there's light at the end of the tunnel? Or would you kind of look at them to say, look, if you want to offload, try to offload as quickly as you can? What do you mm. reckon? What would be your advice? Um, yeah, good question. That's actually a question I get from a lot of my owners. And my answer is always the same. It just depends on what your financial circumstances are. If you if you can't afford to hold on to it because of the cash flow reason, yes. then you're going to have to sell. There's, there's, there's no choice but you know property has always been a good investment for as long as i can remember if you if, if you hold it on for the next five ten years you know in, in melbourne stats show that on average every eight or so years your property value doubles so if you, if you can hold it on for another eight years your, your property's worth 
you know, 700,000 now or 800,000 now in eight years, it'd be 1.5, 1.6 million. Mm. So, you know, regardless of the interest you pay and the, the, the holding costs and the compliance costs, you're going to get more out of it in the end. So the only reason why you should sell now is if you, you can't afford to hold on to it. Yeah. Okay. So so if the, if the financial situation permits, then I guess your advice is try to hold on as much as you Always. Can. Always. Always. Yeah. I think you get any property seminar you go to, unless you're getting scammed, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you that, you know, property is the, the best way best way to retire. So, if, you know, you can hold on to it. It's it, particularly in Melbourne, Sydney, and I know Brisbane's becoming one of those markets too. You hold on to it. Yeah. No, that's right. It's a long term poll strategy, and that's where the compounding yeah. well comes in. So, yeah. uh, you're absolutely right. Okay. Oh, that's good. Um, well, any other advice in terms of to the property or landlords that's in Victoria? Anything else that they should be aware of? Is there any any rumours of any changes to legislation again that's on the table? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're not so much rumours. They're pretty concrete. Um, oh, there okay. will be further changes to the Residential Tenancies Act um, and they will make it a lot harder again for mm-hmm. property owners to, to hold on to their properties because there will be increased compliance and also a lot harder for owners to evict renters if they wish to. Um, and also, you know, um, regulations in terms, of, in terms of how many rent increases you can do yep. and a cap on rent increases. So uh, in, the, in the past 12 months when the market's been really hot, we, we've seen rent increases anywhere between, you know, your $15 a week to $120 a week. Yes. So now there's going to be a cap on how, how much that rental increase can be. Oh. So if your if your costs are higher and they're continuing to increase, and you've got a cap on what you can increase your rent by, that's going to affect you as a landlord too. So I understand um, the government is in the process. They've already announced the changes, but they're in the process of drafting that reform. And I would say somewhere by the end, by the end of this year, early next year, we'll see those reforms being implemented. Um, yeah. So and I, and I know um, other states and territories that have Labor governments. Um, they're looking to implement the same thing. So, yeah, it's increasingly becoming harder. But, you know, like I said before, don't shy away from property if you've got the cash for it and you've got the, the long-term strategy. Um, it's definitely not a, not a short-term strategy anymore. What's the cap, if you don't mind? Do you, do, do you remember on top of your head? We don't know. So so they've announced that there will be a cap. Right. But we, okay. we, they, they haven't. It's not solidified in any dra- form of draft legislation yet. Gotcha. So they've, they've, they've given us sort of a... Uh, a, a macro view of what the changes will be, yes. uh, but in terms of what's specifically how they're going to enact it and how they'll, how it's going to be, I guess how how owners will have to comply. Yep. Um, we, we don't know that that level sort of level yet. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know in Queensland, I think they limit it to one rent increase every twelve months. Is that already in place in Victoria? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So as I understand, the the changes in Queensland are pretty much a carbon copy of what the changes are here in Victoria. Okay. Yep. And now Victoria's like, we're going next. Like, if you've done that, we're going next level, right? We're going to make it even. <laughs> so that's that, yeah, Dan Andrews announced that. Yeah. And then um, he he obviously resigned. And I think the Labor government is still pursuing that because I, I, I did hear in the news a, a few days ago that they were still in the process of getting that, that all sorted Ouch. out. So it's, it's definitely going ahead. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of headwinds, unfortunately, against property investors looking to get into the market um, in that yeah. case. Yeah. And it's a lot more political yeah. reason rather than anything, to be honest, uh, by the sound. Yeah. Yeah, it is. This is probably not the right forum for it, but, you know, um, you're right. It, it, it is making it a lot harder for property owners to, to become investors. And this whole notion that, you know, property investors have millions and squeezes of dollars, um, and that's somehow a, a bit of a class battle. You know, it's not a conversation, but it's right. just not right. I mean, a lot of the owners that we're dealing with are mum and dad investors. You know, they most of them have one investment property. It's it's sort of like acts as a little bit of a super retirement fund. Yes. Um, and that, that's, that, that's their goal, and they want to offer it back uh, for rent until such time as they need to let it go because they're retiring or they're moving in or downsizing or whatever. That's right. most most investors. And unfortunately, these laws uh, or these changes are, are not allowing for for that to happen it's very challenging and i think to a certain degree you know i think yeah victorian is the one that's um disincentivizing property investors um <laughs> the most at the yeah. moment which is a uh, shame to see but i reckon you know i'm sure everything goes around in tights you know there will be good days that's coming in as well um mm-hmm. who knows what's what's to come so uh yeah that's that's keep an eye out um in terms of which i just remember this um any tips for first home buyers looking to get into the Victorian market at the moment? Are there any incentives or, you know, what, what it's looking like? 
Uh, I, know, I know there's a first home, but well, obviously with regards to stamp duty. So as I understand it, if you're buying or purchasing a home less than 700000 then on a, a sliding scale, there are stamp duty um, discounts yes. that can be had. Yeah. Uh, if you buy under 600000 then there's no stamp duty at all. Uh, but, I mean, it's very hard now to find a property you know, under 600000 unless you're heading to a rural area. Um, so they, the, the government probably needs to review that um, and and perhaps push the thresholds up and um, there's also a, a first home home buyer scheme where the government will contribute to a certain amount of the purchase price if you've only got a certain amount of deposit yes. uh, but they, that, that's limited to certain areas so you can't just go to Turak and then buy a property there and say you're a first home buyer and get the scheme I think it's more for designated for for what they say um, out of urban areas mm. so I know for us you're looking at uh, Pakenham uh, Prospect Clyde North um, for those areas to get that scheme. But that's basically you apply through your bank and, and your bank applies on behalf of you or your broker applies on behalf of you to get that scheme. Yep. Um, so they're, they're the two biggest ones at the moment. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I just feel like the first home buyer market, well, it's probably best to get in now rather than later because that's that's the first market that goes boom before the rest of the market catches up. So I'm just feeling like the activity right now is – is sort of signifying that we're going to get to that stage pretty soon. Are you seeing many upgraders at the moment uh, as well? So people who sold their home and then wanting to upgrade into, you know, something bigger, better, um, or is it still just mostly first-home buyers? Mostly first-home buyers. There, there will still be the up, upsizes and the downsizes, the people transitioning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the market right now um, is pretty strong for first-home buyers. Um, and like I said, what you, you know the market's about to go boom when those first home buyer when you list something at a first yeah. home buyer price and it just goes over the range goes over just range. goes over so then you know the rest of the market's going to catch up mm-hmm. okay so there's a lot of competition right now now what's the so so setting that expectation for let's say affordability corridor of around 700 800 mm-hmm. uh is it pretty much always always definitely going over in terms of the sold price and how much you like how much are you looking at roughly you're talking about in terms of the listing over? guide yeah yeah that's right look yeah right now no right now if, if, if property's been listed it would generally go within that range okay uh, if not at the high end okay uh, yep. but yeah when i say when the market goes boom that's when offers start going over when you're getting gotcha. you know five ten fifteen offers on a property and then there's competition and it goes it goes over the range. Yep. We're not at we're not at that stage yet. That stage. I feel like it will happen and it, it will probably happen when you know you start getting the first interest rate drop or the second interest rate drop, when that confidence is just brimming, um, you know, for, for all, all sorts of buyers, that's when you're gonna start to get offers go over the range. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, interesting market. I reckon let's just keep an eye on it. And um, mm. yeah, it's uh I, I do think that Melbourne is going to shine in the next couple of years. As, as soon yeah. as as soon as credit starts to lose, uh, you know, and it's a lot more lending coming in and liquidity comes back, mm-hmm. Melbourne's going to do a really strong run. So um, yeah, yeah, and and, and I, I feel like Melbourne generally always follows Sydney as well. So I don't know how Sydney's going, David, but you know, if, if the Sydney market's strong, I don't know within three to six months. Melbourne starts to follow behind that. So yeah, traditionally that's how that's how that's how it moved. But so far, I don't think Melbourne's following Sydney's trajectory at this point. Mm-hmm. Sydney's okay. still going slow and steady at the moment, mm-hmm. um, even though it's been quite tight in terms of credit. So you know, everyone's experiencing the same issue: can't get money from the bank or can't get mm-hmm. as much money from the bank. So, but uh, what I'm what I'm noticing is I think a lot of people are upsizing. So they're basically selling their current ones. You know, take take the profit. And then essentially move on to a bigger home. So a lot more cash buyers uh, in that sense. So when they sold off property and then they can actually afford to to buy something better. Uh, whereas Melbourne seems like that uh, that upsizing activity hasn't really happened yet. It's still the first home buyers just competing. Mm. Up. So, but that that could happen uh, any time now as well. So we'll see. We'll see. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, anything else to add? Any 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 other things about uh, Melbourne markets or the Southeast um, Melbourne market that you think is worth sharing? No, not this stage. I think we. Uh, I think it might be a good idea to catch in, up in another six months because I yeah, think it's going to be a very different environment. We're looking at yeah. October. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very very different environment at that at that point in time. I hope I hope I'm right. I mean, I don't usually do predictions, but I I, I feel like something's. But you you know you you see activity on the ground and you see how people talk and start thinking about things. You, you, yeah, there's just this anticipation bubbling at the moment. 
And I saw so, that uh, prior to uh, during COVID, actually, um, what was it when the market went boom? It was January J- January one, twenty twenty one. Market went absolute gang. But so yeah, but before that, you just you just knew something was about to happen, and then just bang. It's like a pressure cooker. It's just basically yeah. it's basically building up, right? So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I know you're not a betting man, but what do you think the interest rate is going to be like in six months' time? Uh, well, I mean, based on, what I've, read, based on what I've been reading, they're predicting two drops. Two drops, um, yeah. Yeah, at the end of this year and start next year. So end of the year, what, what is it now, 3.75 or something? Uh, 435. Oh, okay, I'm way off. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying maybe around 4%, 4% by the end of the year, early 25, end of the year, early 25. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah so. Even even then, I think that'd be about 0.35 percent drop. Okay. Yeah. It'll help it'll help borrowing capacity. Don't forget, stage three tax cuts are also going to have an impact as well um, yeah. when people's got more money back in their pockets. So, you know. So, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll bring you back on again in our six months, mate. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for your updates, Andrew. How do uh, how do people reach out to you if uh, if they're interested? Um, you can cop on our website, uh, Aurora Estate Agents with an S on the end dot com dot au, mm-hmm. or give me a call directly on o four. Double one seven three five seven seven six. Awesome. All right. Lovely. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, David. Catch up soon, mate. Bye. See ya.